Our faithful carrier made it all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States, where just moments ago they finished hearing the argument in this case. It was slated to go an hour. They went almost two full hours talking about this. But we're going to talk to the team that brought this to the court today. I've got with me the first Aaron Street, who actually argued this case before the U.S. Supreme Court. This is the case of the postal worker in Pennsylvania who was just wanting to honor the Lord's Day and have Sundays off. The post office didn't want to do that, and that's how we ended up here. Aaron, how'd it go today? Well, we were honored to represent Mr. Groth in his attempt to live out his faith at work, and we were happy to hear that all of the justices across the ideological spectrum today had tough questions for both sides. They were clearly prepared and engaged, and they were struggling with this decision from 1977 that really eviscerated the statutory protection for religious liberty in the workplace. And the only question is, what is going to replace that, and we think, at the very least, it's going to be better than what we have right now. So that's a step in the right direction. Aaron, you were very well prepared and did a great job representing his case. And we're very thankful to Baker Botts for letting you donate your time to do this case. Thank you for that. We are very happy to be a part of this wonderful team and to have a client such as Gerald. We're very grateful to my firm, Baker Botts, for allowing us to contribute our time to this important case. Yeah. What happens next? Tell us what happens. What's the court going to do next? So in the next few days, the court will meet in a conference room and take a preliminary vote uh, on how to rule in this case and some of the outline of the opinion that they will write. And at that time, whichever is the most senior judge in the majority will get to assign the writing of the opinion that explains the court's reasoning. And that justice will go back to his or her chambers and start writing away. And at some point, there will be other opinions written that either agree with or concur in the judgment of the, the majority. So we'll see. Uh, it'll all happen very quickly because in only two and a half months, the court will be adjourning for the summer. So we will have a decision by then. Sometime between now and June, then. Sometime between now and the end of June, yes. All right. Thank you for that. I'm going to rudely step in front of you to talk to these <laughs> three guys, if you don't mind. I've got Alan Reinach who is with the Church State Council, Kelly Shackelford, you know, from First Liberty Institute, and Randy Wanger, who is with Independence Law Center, which is part of the family, uh, let me say it right, the Pennsylvania Family Institute. You got it. <laughs> it's good to have all of you here. This is the triumvirate that worked together, three organizations, a lot of synergy here to bring this case to the court. Very proud of how all three of you worked together on this. Randy, I'm going to start with you. It was your organization that first got a handle on this case. Gerald called you looking for help. Uh, yeah, he was out looking for a new job because of what was happening at the post office and I went to a ministry in Lancaster, Pennsylvania who said, I'm sorry we don't have a job for you, but we might have an attorney for you. <laughs> so yeah. we, were, we were glad to take the call and be able to bring in this team because um, Alan has, he's got experience doing this work with Sabbath accommodations. Um, an expert in this entire nation brought him on the team. Um, brought in First Liberty, and First Liberty then introduced us to uh, to Aaron Street, and so it's been it's been great to have organizations that want to work together for the same goal. And uh, well, we are honored and just thrilled to get to work with with you and Alan on this case. It's been great working with you. These are humble men, and that's hard to find in this profession. <laughs> well, and and that's one of the things that makes me so hopeful about this case. I mean, we we of course look at cases from a completely legal standpoint, but then. Then I look at this in terms of, I think there's the aroma of Christ on this case. When I see the quality of people that we're working with who are humble, God-fearing people who just want to have the right thing done and not take credit for themselves. So this has been a, a real honor to be able to work with, with like-minded people like this. Now, I want to mention real quick, you've been to the Supreme Court before your organization has with the case Conestoga Wood Specialties, the Han family. A lot of people have heard of the Hobby Lobby case against Obamacare. This was also combined with that when the court yes. heard it. So you know what it's like to be in there. How did it go today? What did you think? It, today was a good day. Um, we know we know that the standard is going to change and and hopefully they're going to go back to the standard that makes sense of of the actual statute itself so it was it was a very very lively courtroom and things didn't the questions weren't following normal ideological lines but but we know that they're struggling with where the standard needs to be and the most logical place with the standard is well, precisely what the words mean. Yeah, so, which is what Aaron said yes. in his rebuttal at the end. We just need to talk about the, the actual text of the law as written. Ellen, I'm going to come to you, and then, Kelly, I'll give you the final word on this. 
Alan Reinach has spent more than 30 years arguing cases very much just like this one. Uh, he works with the Seventh-day Adventists. They worship on Saturdays, so he's often fighting for cases that deal with Saturday worship. Right. This one deals with Sunday, but you saw that the principle, the precedents same are the thing. same. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, if you have a religious commitment and conviction not to work on your Sabbath, that should be respected, and the law is intended to respect that. Yeah, that, uh, so much of the argument today focused on two terms of art that focused on undue hardship right. and de minimis. You're an attorney, explain it for a regular human like me. Well, so going back to the case that we're trying to overturn from the 1970s, the Supreme Court was skeptical at that time of anything other than treating people of faith neutrally, the same as everyone else. And so they said, well, the standard of accommodation is really bare minimum in the Latin de minimis, yeah. which, you know, as, as uh, I think it was Justice Gorsuch pointed out, well, that can't be what Congress meant because the law doesn't deal with trivialities. Uh, we've been fighting against this for, as you've mentioned, for decades. Undue hardship clearly means a hardship that's unacceptable, that's not a de minimis hardship. You know, one of my takeaways from today is that the government really demonstrated what I would refer to as hubris in declaring that their view of the cases is that the cases are really mostly getting it right when you had almost every significant religious group in America filing briefs telling the court, we're hurting, we're suffering, our members are being excluded from the workplace because of this de minimis test, we need help. And the government says, no, they're wrong and we're right. I think that's hubris. Yeah. And it will be interesting to see how this shows up in the, in the opinions that they write, both the majority and whatever dissent comes out of this. Kelly, this is the third time First Liberty Institute has been right here on these steps in the past basically 12 months or so. I mean, this started, I guess, a year, a year and a half ago. We, we were here for Carson B. Macon and then here with Coach Joe Kennedy last year. What is it that keeps bringing First Liberty back here? Uh, the Lord's grace uh, giving us an opportunity. I, I just hope we have the same kind of results we had, uh, you know, with those other two cases. Of course, Coach Kennedy and the, and the Carson case, the school choice case out of Maine, great victories. Um, I think this is going to be a great victory. I just don't know how great. I don't know how strong, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody agrees, so much so that when they read Aaron's brief, the other side, the Solicitor General of the United States, kind of said, yeah, we admit de minimis is not really right. So it's a weird case in that we almost win just by getting here. Yeah. Now the question is how big the win is going to be. And we just need to pray for the justices because, as, as Alan said, there are people that are really suffering from this and are going to continue to suffer from a lot of the stuff corporations are doing and not respecting religious freedom in the workplace. And Congress passed a law on this. And, and then, you know, 46 years ago, the Supreme Court just redrafted the law. You can't do that. That's not right. And they recognize that. They really need to go back to the full standard and the full protection. But we just need to pray for the justices as they write, as they meet later this week and talk and make a, a vote and then start writing. Uh, all, all the way between now and June, pray that we get a great decision that really does protect people in the workplace. Again, I, I think it's going to be a move in the right direction. How far? Is, is in the Lord's hands and ultimately uh, we'll find out in, in June. Now, people would be reading stories about this. I think everybody agrees de minimis, just a little, is not the right standard. I mean, everybody agrees on that. But we're seeing uh, media reports that say, well, this is the Christians wanting to tell every employer what they're going to do in the workplace. That's not what we're asking for either. Somewhere in between there is a proper standard that both respects faith and has that balance with employers' needs. And the problem right now, when you put a de minimis standard, which means basically nothing, there's no incentive for the employer to sit down with the employee and go, you know, let's see if we can work these schedules out. Or let's see if we can't take care of this. If they put that back in the law as Congress put in originally, you would see a lot of these situations worked out. Instead of people basically having to choose between their faith and their job, which is not what you're supposed to have to do in America. Kelly is absolutely right with yeah. that. You know, the problem that I see day in, day out handling these cases is not that employers can't accommodate, it's that they won't. 
you know, and if they will only make the effort, the accommodation is an awful lot easier than what they might imagine. Kelly, you've got a dream team here. I just want to step back and let everybody take a look. Tell me what it's like working with Aaron, Randy, and Alan. You know, we've known we've known Randy for years, and he's always been a blessing out of Pennsylvania. And we get to work together every once in a while, and it's always a blessing. He's just not only a great lawyer, but just a great person, a great believer, and just uh, a man of faith. Always does things the right way, so it's fun. And then he brought us to you know to Alan. And Alan's a warrior for many years. I've been fighting in a specific arena, doing kind of thankless work a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, and and just you know, this is because of Alan. I mean, because of his all of his work. That him, he, he's had so many Sabbatarian cases. Almost everything we cited in the briefs was his case. Uh, so that was. And of course, Aaron. Aaron. This is not Aaron's first time at the Supreme Court. No. Aaron's a very uh, skilled advocate at the court. Did a great job, and one of the things we were walking in today, and one of the guys that I know on the court immediately looked up and said, "Welcome back," to, <laughs> when they saw Aaron, because he's been here before. They know who he is, yeah. and he does a great job. And he did a great job today, especially in a in a pretty hot panel, meaning they were coming at him pretty really fast hurt. and furious. And yeah. he did he did a wonderful job. Agreed. So Agreed. this is a a team only the Lord could put together. We're just grateful to be a part of it. Well, thank you to each of you for what you brought to this today. We're very proud of the work that you do and thankful that you're in this fight for religious freedom for all Americans in so many different ways. And each of you have your specialty, and we're grateful for that, too, because the synergy between that is something powerful that, that no one of us could do. But, boy, you put all this together. It's phenomenal. If you want to listen to the argument, it is on FirstLibertyLive.com. We did a live uh, preview for that and also carried the audio. It's long. I'll tell you before you get into it, it's almost two hours long. They went way over time, which is typical of the Roberts courts, uh, Court these days. But if you want to listen to that, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. You don't have to be an attorney to follow most of it, uh, so we invite you to do that. Uh, this is First Liberty Live from the steps of the Supreme Court. First Liberty is fighting for what matters most.